The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by, I think, for Freedom. It's not even a thing right now. They're still working on assembling a brand new team, so hopefully that'll get started soon. Anyways, I'm here from the, uh, are you pod faded yet? <laughs> you're on the brink Technically, of... Technically, no. Yeah, you're on the brink of no. pod fading, and I kind of kind of dip into that every once in a while, and they're like, no, 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 not pod fading. I love this too much. No, I, I've been jonesing, man, to uh, get back to it. No, not not fading, man, just a little bit of a hiatus. I've uh, been busy working and yeah. doing the vacation thing, so but uh, so look, yeah. for my, look for my return this week and, or next and week. And, of course, you are David Lukart from the Zombies, Governments, and You podcast, which is a great yeah, yeah. podcast when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> When I actually bother to produce it, right? Yeah, it's great. And I remember I, I found your Thanks, man. I found your show through uh, Bipcot when it first got started, and they were just dumping all the stuff that people were uh, putting Bipcot license on. I was like, "What is this? Like, what is this? I never heard of this. This looks interesting." Because at the time, I was kind of just at that point where I was getting off the uh, uh, what is that show, Walking Dead kind of bandwagon. I was like, ah, "I'm getting off right. of this," but I was like, "Wait." libertarianism and and zombies <laughs> why not yeah why not what, what could be better yeah so we watched a movie uh well i i've seen this movie a long time ago and i kind of was refreshing up on it before we started recording and i sent it to you because you said you'd never seen it <laughs> and it was called beer wars and i think it was like 2009 yeah 2009 yeah and it's a great film and um so what did you learn about it Watching it, then of course I, I learned that I should have watched it a long time ago when I had it in my <laughs> Netflix queue. But <laughs> I, I'm I'm guilty of doing that a lot. Like, oh, I'll watch this, and then it just yep. you know withers and dies in in line. Yep. No, man, it it was great, bro. Um, because just going, you know, beer is something I'm also very passionate about. In a, in addition to the undead and liberty, and, that, so, and that's why <laughs> I recommended of, it to you. <laughs> yes, yeah. I give it a four four beers up. Um, yep. No, it was cool, man, because it tells kind of a side of that industry that um, I think unless you're, you know, brewing beer or you kind of work in that industry, you may not realize just how effed up it is, you know what I mean? Or how, like the three-tier system they talked about, and uh, but just, it was, a, it was a really cool window back into, because now there's, I think, over 5,000 craft breweries or something in America, I looked it up, 2016. Yeah. But I think, back in the back in the day, there was you know these guys were just kind of starting out in the mid '90s or 2000s. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to see that window back into that time. Yeah, I mean, they said in the film that like craft breweries make up like five percent of the of the American market for beer. It's probably not. It's it's, it's definitely no. not at Budweiser levels yet. But I'm I guarantee it. It's at least at least double <laughs> because now it's like the trendiest thing. Now you're seeing like brew pubs all over the place and you're seeing brew pub brew pubs now that are like, we don't even, we don't even fuck around with, um, with Budweiser and Coors and MGD anymore. Um, no. Yeah. And the place that we do our Liberty on the rocks thing, they, they're pretty, they're pretty hard nosed about like, no, we not only do they do not do Budweiser and stuff like that. They won't even do like their fake little breweries, which they talk about in the movie. They're, they're fake little home, uh, craft breweries. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no Goose Island, no nothing. Well, Goose Island started out as a craft brewery, and they were bought out by InBev. So, yeah. And you're breathing into the mic. <laughs> we got to complain about that. <laughs> the last show. Sorry. You, you got to be Taze on day. Move away from the mic hey, to breathe I, in. I'm trying to take some heat off of uh, Bab there, man. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Who I, lo I love that last installment of Dear Babby. I, I love every time Bab's on. So, but that la the Dear Babby was great, man. I enjoyed it. Yep. So yeah, um, and it's kind of interesting how how much of a grip they have on the whole market, and it's not, <coughs> excuse me, like all the the big. Well, I guess it's big too. When they when they were making this movie, there was three, but at the time they talked about like during the production of this movie, it became two, because yeah. Miller and Coors uh, merged. merged. Yeah, and then and that's about the same time. That's when InBev bought Anheuser Busch. So now there are like these huge worldwide conglomerates that are all over the place now. And it's not just like American either. So it's I mean, so that's that's the down part of it. But the good part is like a lot of the stuff that they're talking about where craft breweries are trying to get some kind of hold. Not so much the case anymore. 
to an extent yeah. to an extent yeah they still have a hold <laughs> yeah absolutely i I, fu- I thought that was pretty ironic that uh after inbev bought uh anheuser bush they came out with the america can you know <laughs> It's like not. It's not even American anymore. It's not owned in America. You know, yeah. stomp my can, I'll stomp your ass. You know, but yeah, good times. But no, yeah, dude, it's a great time for craft breweries. Um, I still think there's that that barrier to entry though is the uh, uh, how they're not allowed to sell directly to uh, retailers. Mm-hmm. You have to have that three tier system. That's kind of how they maintain their uh, pretty much a de facto monopoly or you know crowd you know crowd out the smaller uh, brewers. So what is the t- three tier system? Cause I didn't get to that part in the movie when I was kind of refreshing. It's been years since I've seen it. <laughs> so yeah. So they have well, distributors, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a, a left or a holdover of prohibition, which, you know, thanks government. Government creates all these problems, obviously, but um, where, you know, after prohibition failed, they came up with this supposed three tier, uh, system that was supposed to kind of model the separation of powers of the u.s government we all we all know how well that works right uh where uh brewers could not sell directly to the retailer so they have to go through a uh a wholesale uh, a wholesaler or a distributor um which is basically allowed uh companies like anheuser and, and coors and miller to affect a stranglehold for, for the most part, or or to you know to crowd out um, competition through uh, kind of locking down that distribution network um, in terms of their market share and all that. So it's just bad news for for the small smaller brewers who make probably a superior product, you know, and yep. uh, but but can't get the shelf space because I mean that's kind of what it ties into is how much shelf space you have for your product or where it's placed um and because it's basically the, the, a banner ad like you're basically paying yeah. for or not paying for but having room to advertise your beer right 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 yeah. it's you know you get that whole uh, they say like the prime real estate is that that eye level shelf and mm-hmm. that so they billboard that with all these giant brewers uh variations of the same <laughs> of the same beer basically <laughs> Um, and it it crowds out the other, you know, the smaller brewers. Yeah, and they they were talking about like, okay, so you have Bud Light, but we're not just going to put like you know a, a twelve pack of Bud Light here. We're not we're gonna we're gonna have a twelve pack of Bud Light, twelve pack of Bud Light cans, twelve pack uh, a twenty pack of tw- uh, bottles, twenty packs of this, eighteen packs of this, six packs right. of this, you know, six packs of bottles, et cetera. And then so you have this big huge area, and it's just for one type of beer. That comes yeah, in and then different the mini bottles or the mini can, you know, <laughs> like the, the tall cans. Yeah. You know, every kind of can you can imagine. Yeah. <clears throat> and so they do that. And then Anheuser Bush, I don't even know if this is still around, but they, they were talking about it during the show. I was like, I don't even think I've even seen that in a while. And that was Budweiser Select. And that was the one with the little weird kind of red scribbly crown. <laughs> right. <laughs> and. And that was, I remember people were drinking that back in the day and I was like, what exactly is this? And I remember trying it like, I don't see what the difference is. Is it supposed to be like a, a midway between light and regular bud? They never really talked about it. They're just like, it, it, what's the difference? It, just try it. It's got <laughs> like, a bl- Thank you. you. Try it. You'll know. No. <laughs> well, and, and um, there's actually in the movie, there's a great scene where they take people and they're like, Okay, what what's I'll your beer of choice? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I I'm I'm a Miller guy. I drink Bud. I drink Coors Light. And they had like a that was fairly unscientific, but they had a brown bag taste test where they put the three cups out there and put a mm-hmm. bag over the bottle. And you know, I don't know how many people got it right, but everyone that they showed uh, picked. You know, I this is Bud Light. Nope, it's Miller. Or you know, like oh, this is Coors. Nope, it's Bud. So uh, you know, if you can't even tell the different brands apart. Um, how are you going to tell, like, you know, Bud Select and Bud, you know, Budweiser apart? Yeah. I think I can taste the difference between the two, or between the three, rather, because Bud Bud Light uses rice. And, and I True. can I can differentiate corn. Like, if it has corn in it, I know it. So I can tell which ones are the two corns. And then Coors Light is the most watery of them all. <laughs> it's just, just basically watery. Yeah. And, and that's how I could possibly narrow down all three. But until I do it, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not going to do the Pepsi challenge anytime soon. I'm not interested. 
<laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, we won't go there. And Pepsi's gross anyway. But um, <laughs> so yeah, they did that test, and it was kind of. And I remember thinking like, yeah, they pretty they for the most part they taste the same. Like you would really have to really have a really good palate in order to kind of pick out those subtle nuances between the flavors. Because there's really right. no real big different, dif- differentiation between them. They're all kind of watery, kind of funky wat- beer, you know. And they're supposed to be not. Su- and they were light beers, by the way. They they weren't <laughs> they weren't going after like the regular ones, which probably be a little easier. But mm. there there was a great clip. One of the um, Money Python. I don't know. It wasn't Terry Gillum. One of the Money Python guys was doing some stand up. And they're pretending yeah. to be uh, Australian guys. He's holding like a can, a can of Fosters, and he's like, he's like, we like to say American beer is like uh, having a sex in a canoe because it's fucking close to water. <laughs> like, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. But what's sad is like if you, I don't know if you've ever talked with beer to people outside of the continent. <laughs> if you talk to people in Europe. Uh, about American beer, like they'll be like, "Oh, yeah, I've had Budweiser once. It's disgusting." And it's like, you, you know, American beers suck. They're all they all taste like water. It's, it's fucking. It's like a, you know, it's like uh, right. having sex in a canoe. And you have to tell them like, no, if you, Amer- America has like so many different t- kinds of breweries now that are popping up, and they're kind of starting to dominate the market a little bit. And when it comes to choice, yeah, America has it the best. Like when it comes to Choices between like some of the best brew. In fact, if I looked up rate beer right now, it'll have like the list of the top breweries in in the world. And I think like the vast majority of them are American and they're rated by people all over the world. Yeah. America. America. No, yeah, that I mean that would be like us going like, oh, I, I've had uh, you know European beer. I've had Heineken all the time, or you know what I mean. Like <laughs> Heineken's like the year, you know, well they're bought by Anheuser Busch now or yeah. whatever I guess, but they're like Heineken's like kind of like the Budweiser of Europe. So it's, um, I remember like I think it was Adele that you know the pop singer that said when she tours she only wants you know English beers because American beer you know. For underwriters or whatever, only uh, English beers because American beers are horrible. And I'm like, you're so wrong. Yeah, so wrong, so wrong. And it's have you ever talked to people in Australia? Be like, oh yeah, I've had Australian beers. Foster's just dis- is disgusting. <laughs> they will jump down your throat. Like you've, no one here drinks Foster's. It's it's <laughs> it's like tourist beer. <laughs> it's what tourists drink when they come down here. You they they have like their own little regional breweries that they're all about. Yeah, was, yeah. Brewed with Vegemite or something, probably. But yeah, I'm trying to find the list of breweries. Um, I see like the beer gods' top fifty beers. Um, oh, top fifty retired beers. <laughs> Here we go. Let's try the beer gods. Oh, beer. I have to. I have to be a the beer gods. Be a always smell the pun. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I don't want to be I wouldn't a, want to be a, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a member of any club that would have me anyway. You yeah. know what I mean? No, yeah. It, it's a great it's a great movie, man. Um it, it's weird because I hadn't even thought about some of those breweries for a while, like as being I guess they're more regional breweries now, but like uh, you know, they focus on doghead, uh or I mean, Yeah, which I've always heard about, but you know, I've never tried not not I haven't back seen it. much. Yeah, it doesn't get into this market. But, There's um, one that has a name that's like similar, and every time I see it, I'm like, "Oh, is that Yingling?" No, it's not. No, you know what I'm but, talking uh, about. It's like Lung Yang or something like that. It starts with an <laughs> L, and every time I see it, it has the same kind of little scribble writing and everything. Yeah. It's red, and I'm like, "Oh, is that it?" No, no, no. Damn it! <laughs> I'm gonna find so it one probably, of these days. It's probably an, it's probably an Anheuser Busch uh, <laughs> knockoff, right? Yeah. <laughs> Try to compete <laughs> from the green, the green, yeah, Green Valley, yeah. Uh, organic beer. Yeah, in were, the film uh, they were talking about. Yeah, the, in the film they were they were showing like, look at this uh, craft brew brew here, and it's like it was like organic top hops beer, <laughs> and it's you know brewed in what was it Green Valley, green, California, Green Valley, California, Fort, yeah, Fairfield. Yeah, and they were like, okay, let's go find it. And so they they looked around and everybody was like, I've never, I didn't know we had our own local brewery here. We, we didn't know that. I mean, we know we have a, a Budweiser, and they're like, Oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh <is> yeah. That? <laughs> and 
<laughs> and then they were like, yeah, it's, it's basically Budweiser. And they went to the um, the headquarters of Anheuser Busch, and they're like, yep, this is our beer. <laughs> we were, yeah, you caught us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they were happy to tell you that they made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it, it, it was, it's just me. Was it like everybody in? It may have been uh, editing or bias in the directors. Was that? That's fine. You know, all all documentaries have a a bias or whatever. But where like everybody in the Anheuser Busch, uh, you know, that was like the brewmaster at Anheuser Busch was like the most like unlikable guys like oh yes i i really love this beer i mean i thought he was like a, an android or something for a second <laughs> i get to taste them all that's the best yeah. thing ever yes, that know. is yeah. <laughs> they're like help, <laughs> help. <Send> you know help. <laughs> and then uh and then and then they're like we're trying to find and what's with the name? Like, uh, you know, no offense, because I know you're a fourth, but they're like looking for August Bush the fourth. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> <laughs> and she like she finally like corners him, and he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, I'm making a movie. Hey, you know? And he's like, uh, do you have a card? And then he just like walks off. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> totally oh, trying man. to be like Michael Moore, I guess. We're, we're gonna get a hold of Roger. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> but at least she was honest enough, to, honest enough to show, like, hey, we at least like got face to face with them. Michael Moore was like, oh, we never got to talk with them. Yeah, yeah they but just Michael Moore him, like, did. Sta- standing standing outside the door for who oh, what mm-hmm. looking through with that big stupid hat, you know. <laughs> that guy kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Yeah, thankfully. And yeah. there was an interesting part of that movie, and I don't know if you picked up on it, but they it was like towards the kind of like first third of the movie there was a part where they were at this big beer convention and they had the anheuser bush people and it was right when he was <laughs> when they were like hey um like does this beer have it made with fresh strawberries or whatever or is it like an extract and he was like oh i believe it's an extract like and he starts pointing over to the other side and there's a uh-huh. guy over there pouring beer and they end up showing a closer up of him that guy works for Stone now. <laughs> and you can actually, if you go to Stone's website or their YouTube page, you'll see him in like a bunch of different videos, which is nice. interesting because I guess you can kind of like, fuck my life. I don't want to work here anymore. I'm going to work for Stone. Can, either that or he's a corporate spy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we just outed him on, on your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be issuing a big press statement tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. He's found. He was found uh, committed suicide with two shots in the back of the head <laughs> in the stone parking lot. Oh, he was geez. like, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I betrayed you. I came here to spy on you, but I fell in love in the process." <laughs> kind of like was it that movie Antitrust? Did you ever see that? <laughs> no, I never got around to it. So, like, the whole thing is, like, there's, like, this Microsoft corporation, and this guy is, like, an open source programmer, and they end up convincing him to come work for him, and she has, like, this girlfriend. And it turns out that his girlfriend was working for that corporation the whole time to spy on him. <laughs> but she was ah. like, they're like, betray him. And he was like, no, I fell in love with him. <laughs> yeah. Lo- so, love and beer conquers all. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> and But yeah, but um, kind of going back to the whole um, the marketing thing at the beer aisle, it's, it's interesting because what they do – like brands like like you know grocery stores like Kroger you know and all the different names of stuff that they have, Safeway, Vons Pavilions, uh, all of them, Walmart. What they do is they have a whole bunch of like they have a whole bunch of aisles with different foods and, you know they have like managers that try to decide like okay where are we gonna place all of our products you know we want the the things that we know are gonna sell the best at eye level and everything else kind of around it, and um, when it comes to all that stuff they. They usually just hand it off to whoever they think understands it better. So, like, cereals, they're going to be like, oh, right, let the General Mills and whatever people fight it out and let them work on something. Um, and what you end up getting is them kind of, like, creating a whole bunch of different stuff just to weed out other people. But they also kind of control, like, okay, well, where are all these other brands that don't have a say in where we're going to place all the products on the shelves? And they kind of nudge them off to the side, you know, the you know the worst pl- place that you know the more more hidden part of the of the aisle. Not something that you're going to mm-hmm. see right when you turn into the aisle. You know, it's going to be like somewhere in the middle or somewhere off to the side or you know deep in the back yeah. of the store. And they kind of do bottom this. shelf. 
Yeah, and so everybody's so ever what everybody wants is a place on the shelf. Like they that they at at the point of this movie, it was like any place on the shelf is fine. <laughs> like we just can't get on the shelf. Yeah, now I it's all about on like, the shelf. Yeah, now we want to be kind of closer to the other side. And so the people who decide that are people like Anheuser Busch and Coors and Coors Miller who decide what is going to be placed where. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't make the list, tough luck, guys. You know, you're going to be on the on the warm shelf with everybody else. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, actually, in, in the store that I frequent, um, there's like a total segregation almost. There's like one section for, you know, the, the macro brews or whatever you want to call them, the big two, I guess now. But uh, so they have pretty much a whole section that's just Coors, Miller. Budweiser, and then another row of more of the craft, or and and, and there's some bleed over with because you know, <laughs> freaking because who knows, you know, Anheuser Bush owns Stella and what now, and all that, so Stella or Indev, I guess, but still a toi. Um, they make great steins, I will give them that. They do. Uh, my beef with them is like, what's with the 11.2 ounces, you know, like. <laughs> You know, don't think I don't don't think I'm not reading. You know how many ounces are in here? Like, where's that point eight of, of an ounce going? Why is it so yeah. important? You know that I don't get that, but you're charging me. You know for twelve. You know the same price as a twelve ounce one. I'm frugal. What can I say? And it, and but no, in yeah, the yeah, end, yeah, it just totally, tastes totally like separate. it just tastes like any other kind of cheap import Heineken. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I like it. it um, if it's in a enclosed box because then you don't get you know it's got the, the green light, bottle yeah. so it lets in more uv which gives you that skunky flavor looking at you corona <laughs> um <laughs> well corona's got I the did. clear bottle which is the worst of them all which is even worse right yeah, yeah. so um but yeah so they have a totally different section for a, and they have a pretty good selection of a lot of craft beers um so I don't I don't know if that's good or bad that the, uh, they're separate, but at least there's a good amount of floor space devoted to you know uh, better beer yeah. or, or smaller breweries and all. So I, I kind of dig that. Plus I got a little bar in there, so you can just sit there and have a beer while you're while you're uh, significant at other shops. Yeah, because I <laughs> I remember when I first started drinking when when I was 21, of course. If you wanted good beer, <laughs> like there was like there was like one good beer store. I remember in Cal- when I, I lived in Riverside, California at the time. There was one good beer store that sold like all the really good stuff. It, like if you go to the occasional like super uh, convenience store, they might have some interesting stuff, um, but not really. Um, you know, like, like occasionally you'll see something like, oh, they have Flying Dog here. Oh, shit. <laughs> but for the most part, it was really rare. So if you wanted right. Stone Brewery, you had to go to La Bodega. That was the only place that sold stuff like that. That was it. And I remember kind of going like, man, I wish I could just get this stuff at like a grocery store. Now I'm seeing, you know, Stone IPA six packs at Walmart. <laughs> like this is this is progress, I guess. <laughs> Walmart, but it's still progress. Yeah, you, yeah. Sh- you start chipping away at, at the behemoth there. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I'm like you. I remember like my introduction to because we, me and my buddies, drinking beer was let's go get a thirty pack and shotgun them <laughs> until we puke. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then you know you start. Oh, okay. What's this? Sam Adams. I think Sam Adams was kind of like my first introduction to uh, a craft beer. Um, you know, and of course that's talk. You know, they're brought up in that in the uh, beer wars. And then you kind of find something else like, oh, Sierra Nevada, what's this? You know, Pale Ale, IPA, and then like, yeah, Stone, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, Stone was one of the but first people a, I, to just like, hey, we're gonna assault you with hops, and you're gonna love it. <laughs> it was like, I did. <laughs> I I was I was a little bit. I, I, I my snobbery. I get a little bit of a, more of a snob snob credit than you, because I went from. Thinking that Newcastle was the bombest stuff ever. Oh yeah! <laughs> I went from I went straight from that because that's basically just you know cheap, you know adjunct cheaper lager. brown ale. Right. It's sweet. I or always when people say like, oh, I'm just first starting getting into beer. I usually say like, try Newcastle first. Like that's like one of the first ones I do because it's sweet, but it's not like candy sweet. It's like right. ha- like malty sweet, which is what you want. And you kind of like this kind of bready. 
yeah, so this is kind of like your like your toe in the water. And if you if you like that, then you can move on to something like Guinness. Oh, you like Guinness? We'll move on to something like this. You don't want to be like, just try Arrogant Bastard, which is what I did. I lucked out because I have a weird palate, and I really like kind of I like s- things that are like really sour, really spicy, really bitter. Like that's just kind of like my <laughs> just my my palate's always been. And what happened was my my buddy. Tommy Crandall had mentioned like, oh, there's this beer called Arrogant Bastard and it's great. You have to try it. And he's not really, he wasn't into craft beer. He just liked the name. <laughs> so, and I was like, okay. It's got, a, it's got a gargoyle on it. Yeah. And I was like, this is the most pretty- amazing thing ever. I have to try this. And um, of course I was 21. <clears throat> but so I was like, you know, hey, dad. Allegedly. Yeah. I was like, hey, dad, here's 20 bucks. Uh, I heard they have this stuff at this place called La Bodega. <laughs> Can you go down there and pick <laughs> some up for me? And he was like, sure. You're 21, right? Of course. Just You're just buying it for me, right? Anyways, wink, wink. And <laughs> he brought back you like. You just didn't want to leave the house. It's okay. Yeah. He brought back some like some Moylan's like Scottish ale and some, nice, which is good. And Arrogant Bastard and a few other stuff. He was like, oh, I got you that. And, you know, whatever. And then I was like, I got some other stuff that I just like the labels of. And they were all good. But the first one I wanted to try was the Arrogant Bastard. So I went straight from, like, Newcastle thinking that was the bomb <laughs> to Arrogant Bastard. And I was like, <gasps> and I was, like, sharing with this with my friends. I was like, you have to try this. I would go to parties, like keggers, and bring my own Arrogant Bastard everywhere. And everyone used to be like, what the fuck are you drinking? And I was like, trust me. It's the best stuff ever, and everyone's like, "This is this is not that good, Jim." <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna go back to the Ice House keg. <laughs> yeah, let, <laughs> let me get <laughs> let me get some more Schlitz. <laughs> I was yeah, like, "Okay, here, all right, fine, more for me." And I would you know, I, I would always leave the bottle like on like somewhere like strategically placed so you could see the label, and people would look at it and go, "What is this?" And next thing you know, I I, I left for a little bit. From you know going to parties and stuff, and next thing you know, like everybody's like drinking Arrogant Bastard, and it's like I built that, I built you that. built that, yeah, <laughs> I built that. This is a good conversation starter, and you know, yeah, you help build that brand, man. They should probably be paying you a, a stipend yeah. or something. Well, they did give me a bunch of stickers. <laughs> I remember nice. I was like, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a tattoo, and they were like, that's amazing. Uh, we'll give you your address. We're going to send you a bunch of stickers just in case you need the artwork. I never got the tattoo, but... Um, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. You could, you could just put the sticker on and pretend, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they gave me this huge sticker, and I ended up giving it to my friend because uh, I didn't want to put that on my car. But it was huge. It was like maybe two by three foot it was a huge sticker wow and he just put it on the hood of his car and he just had a big arrogant bastard sticker on the hood why, of his why car. did why didn't you want to put it on your car jim you're afraid you might get uh targeted for some revenue it, it, would, it looked or what? well he had a white truck and it was a white sticker and it worked a little bit better and i was like yeah, yeah. And my car was all kind of busted up and i was like i'm probably gonna get a new car soon and i ended up doing it anyway so it have been it was better for him because he had that truck forever nice yeah um so that was worth it but, you know, I still have one of the stickers. It's stuck on my didgeridoo. And it's, like, torn up. It's so old. <laughs> it's been through a lot of hell. And, it's been through hell and back. But Wait, wait. Can we just talk about the fact that you have a didgeridoo? Yes, and... I have a didgeridoo. I also have a theremin, too. <laughs> I, I've, heard, I've, heard of, I've heard of the theremin, but, I've not, you know. Yeah. Why, why is there no video of you playing the didgeridoo? There should be. May, I don't know. Maybe I should. I should do something. should make that happen. I should make that happen. <laughs> So yeah, um, they were like really, they were really good about all that stuff as far as like no. reaching out to people. Yeah, and, well, and then and uh, go back to the movie that the, the uh, owner or the founder of Dogfish Head, Sam or whatever, he brought up a good point where he's like, yeah, you have, you know, Anheuser and and uh, Coors and all these guys brewing these so called, um, you know, pumpkin spice or or whatever ales, and. They're obviously like, you know, you mentioned uh, they were using extracts when they were, you know, when they were confronted at the brewing thing, they're like, no, we use an extract. Yeah. So you have this kind of like basically what cores and, and all these uh, other brewers are is a watered down imitation of actual beer. And now they're just trying to port that to, you know, more of a craft side where you're doing like a seasonal pumpkin or mm-hmm. whatever. And he's saying if you have, you know, Anheuser's version of pumpkin ale next to you know for four bucks punk, 
punk for four bucks next to the punk and ale for eight and the guy you know somebody who's kind of uninitiated in the craft beer world might say oh, well i don't know if i'm really gonna like it so i'll try the four dollar one yeah and they wind up hating it and then they go back to you know just drinking uh, uh you know cooler duh yeah duff <laughs> my, my, <laughs> duff, dr- duff dry yeah the duff light duff and duff dry yeah. they were all coming from the same spout the same, the same spigot yeah <laughs> Exactly. No, exactly right. Yeah. You know what I mean. So that was that was a great uh, point too. You know, so you get this kind of it puts people off of actually trying good beer, like you know, like you said, uh, Arian Bastard or or a good seasonal or a good IPA or whatever. So yeah. So there was um, ah, uh, jeez. Um, I remember recently there was a uh, a new release by by Bud Budweiser. Was it Bud Light Platinum or something like that? Yeah, yeah, and I talked to my friend like because he, he he still drinks that crap, and he's like, eh, it, like he he drinks good beer. Like, don't get me wrong, but he's he's like one of those people's like I drink really good beer, but sometimes when it's really hot out and I don't want to deal with that stuff and I just want to get drunk, you know, I'll get sh- s- swill, and he knows that it's swill, and he's okay with that. Then I was yeah, like, no worries, yeah. Like I, I to be fair, I do that it's, too. Like I'm one of those people. It's, it's like uh, I'm getting coors lo- tonight. <laughs> it's, la- it's two dollars. It's, it's it's lawnmower beer, right? Or, you know what I mean? Like hey, I'm gonna be out in the yard. I'm gonna you know have a you know I'll have a couple of coors lights or yeah whatever. So. Yeah. And uh, I was asking him, like, what's what is it? And he was like, it tastes just like Bud Light. <laughs> I was like, well, what's the fucking point? I think they uh, were. I think it was maybe a little it, lower calorie or something. If it's platinum, I. Th- I think it has a higher ABV. Oh, okay. I think it's like I think it's around six percent. Because I got a buddy who's you know he, he, cool guy. He's into you know being fit and all that, and that's what he drinks you know primarily. And I think he mostly does it for yeah lower calorie but higher ABV. So yeah. I think it's kind of like a step up. Of, you know, it's kind of like a a step up above Steel Gravity or you know what I mean, like what, something like that. You know, if you don't want to be see, seen drinking a, a high you know. High alcohol malt beverage. You you have the Bud Light Platinum, I guess. Yeah. Is it still around? I'm trying to look to see if it's still around. I don't know, but it, I can't imagine it being worth it. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's it's another one of those Budweiser Select. You know, it comes around, doesn't really have anything distinguishing from it. it just oh, we're just going to come out with a new brand. People ask us what the difference is. Try it. It's it's kind of brilliant marketing, and it also keeps their competitors from from g- gaining shelf space. You know, because right. We're the big guys. We just came out with a brand new product. You're gonna tell us no? <laughs> You're gonna move us aside? Come on, we're your bigger sell big we're your biggest sellers, so it works for them. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But uh I, I thought it was interesting too how it talked about the regulatory or the lobby side of it where mm-hmm. and they went to uh, this one guy and he he's a he- the head of the uh Whatever the Brewers lobby, basically. Yeah. The end. That guy looks or something like that. That guy looks like a cartoon character, like a, <laughs> like a Does cartoon villain. Yeah, like a cartoon corporate villain. <laughs> yeah, like like every cliche, every cliche except yeah. like twirling a mustache. You you know, her, her, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you couldn't cast him any better in yeah. like a you know like an eighties, uh, you know, crime thriller or something. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like. And he and he's talking about like, well, we have to have a voice because of the neo prohibitionists, you know. And I'm like, ooh. And but there, to be fair, like turn- I, there was one thing I did not like about that movie is that there are neo prohibitionists. Like they're still oh, exist. Sure, yeah, sure. I- and they do. And it's not like they're oh, it's just like the fringe party. Was it the prohibition party or something like that that no one really pays attention to? Like no, mad. Mothers Against Drunk Driving. They're a prohibition yep. organization. The, the one, of, I think, the lady that founded it actually is. There's like, you know how Greenpeace, the guy that founded Greenpeace, is like one of their most outspoken critics. <laughs> Same thing with <laughs> <Yeah>. Mad, <laughs> if I recall correctly. And yeah, she was like, I wanted to do this to like help try to like push, you know, whatever legislation. Fuck her. But I mean, like, you know, mm-hmm. we're trying to push. This is better than what they are now. But she was like. I just wanted to push like heavier legislation against drunk driving and they turned it into a way to try to stop alcohol sales period, you know? So it's, it's the modern day women's temperance league. Yeah. Is, is pretty much what it morphed into. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm not saying that there isn't anybody out there trying to fight for prohibition, but it was ironic. I thought that, you know, here it is the alcohol lobby complaining about 
neo-prohibitionists when they're one of the largest advocates or financiers of prohibition against um, the pots. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, pro- yeah. we don't want prohibition for us, but we, you know, and I don't, I'm not into weed. It's not my thing. Um, but I don't, you know, this sh- definitely should not be illegal. It's not, you know, my, in my business, what you put in your body and, uh, but it, it was just kind of funny and hypocritical to <laughs> yeah. me. I'm like, how are you, you know, how do you even fucking do the mental gymnastics to get around that in your head must be <laughs> insane. Yeah, But it's funny because in Nevada, we should segue to the next topic. Uh, <laughs> but in, in Nevada, the alcohol distributors are the ones that are distributing recreational marijuana now. <laughs> they don't know how to do it. And of course, now <laughs> Kansas or Kansas, fuck. Oh, I'm glad I'm not in that place. Might as well be Kansas. <laughs> Las Vegas is now suffering a shortage of ma- recreational marijuana. Mind you, the stores just started selling it 15 days like, ago. It's been like it's been like, <laughs> it's been like two weeks. Yeah. When I, when I first read it, I'm like, damn, how many people are you know buying it? You know, but I didn't know all the uh, the behind the scenes thing until I saw that article. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're running out, and which which is which is sad because I want to know how this is going to affect um, Freedom Fest because uh, Freedom right. Fest is coming up here in in what it's this week. Holy shit, it's this week! So I'm going to be off all week, and if you want to hang out with me, you can come to Freedom Fest. I'll be there pretty much all week. No, it's <laughs> shameless plug, I guess. but um, <laughs> and, it's your show, man. Plug away. Yeah, um, but the um. But because they're so here's the problem with the whole thing, and I think we I talked about it with Babs, I don't remember, but um, so people are going to have a hard time getting the stuff because the uh, the alcohol distributors are, are ruining everything, and they they kind of don't have the infrastructure to do it really again. Yeah, and <laughs> your kids are home, huh? <laughs> and and uh, they were so so all these people all these libertarians are going to come and they're going to want to buy marijuana they're going to think they oh we're going to come down and be able to smoke on the strip they're going to go there and buy it and they're going to be like now <clears throat> you can't smoke this in your hotel room because it's illegal on the strip and you can't smoke it on the strip you can't smoke it in your car on the strip you can't smoke it anywhere on the strip full stop um so what are people going to do like there's two choices right they can pay a lot of money through the nose in order to buy you know the little vape pens and, you right. know, and kind of sneak it in. I'm like, oh, no, it's just a regular cigarette, e- e-cigarette, uh, which is what they did at Freedom Fest last time, uh, even though we didn't have a recreational. But people were still using the little vape pens. I, I saw them. I, I, I'm not going to mention names. Don't worry. I'm not out on you. But, <laughs> but there was people who were like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just out here smoking my vape. Ooh, nicotine. <sighs> but, um, Wink. Yeah, like you want to hit on my nicotine gem? Like, no, nah, I'm I, I don't smoke weed. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were a libertarian, damn it. Uh, Smart nick of weed. <laughs> and and they uh, and so so the people are going to do that, or and if, or if they don't want to do that, they'll they'll spend for you know a couple bucks in order to get like an edible. Now, the problem with mm-hmm. edibles is if you're not familiar with edibles, I don't have you ever you don't smoke weed, do you? Or have you? No, I don't. Okay. Have you yeah, ever you know, did I, edibles? In the past, but no, never. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a lot of people like you <laughs> who probably never had an edible in their entire life. Edibles are way, 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 way stronger than smoking. Uh, and if you are one of these people who have, get a little bit of anxiety, cause I do, mm-hmm. I get real bad anxiety. And it's because I, I've, I've had a real bad experience with edibles. Is you can have like crippling paranoia crippling paranoia like anytime you hear about these stories like oh people are going to the hospital like people are calling 911 because they think they're overdosing on weed and we're like haha that's funny but it makes sense if you eat it <laughs> like it makes total True. sense yeah because you just get into that kind of mindset and i'm wondering if i go there <laughs> how many people am i going to start seeing freaking out because they were like oh i just ate a brownie it's been like an hour nothing happened i'll eat another one <laughs> and then they just started like Screeching in the hall, like, I'm gonna die. Call 911. I ate too many brownies. <laughs> I'm waiting for that, and I'm gonna get it all on video. <laughs> I'm gonna get the whole thing nice. on video. Yeah, I'm ready well, for is it. Is there like a uh, is there like a uh, a pot version of Narcan? Maybe you could. Uh, <laughs> maybe 
I don't, you know, maybe we could get a hold of that and, uh, you know, hey, man, I'll get, you know, it's just get a little cottage industry on, on the side there, you know, helping people out. I think, I I'll, I'll, I think I'll bring some peppercorns with me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'll just bring some. <laughs> Chew these. You'll be okay. <laughs> You'll be all right. Yeah. From what I understand, uh, peppercorns will, like, get rid of that extreme kind of anxiety or paranoia people have. So I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about trying it again because I heard that and I was like, oh, I'll try it one more time. And if that works, then maybe I'll kind of get back into it. But I'm waiting for everybody to get drug tested at my work because <laughs> they're like, oh, pot's legal now. It's been two now, weeks. Now, do you pee um, in this cup? You don't. Do you have to uh, inject the peppercorn or how do you know? Is it like a syringe <laughs> through the heart? They say <laughs> you eat two or three little peppercorns. Like just chew on them and you'll be all right. And I, I could probably pull it up exactly what it is, but there's like a chemical in there that kind of counterbalances yeah. something in marijuana that does that. I don't know. And make sure you get peppercorns, not pepperoncinis, because that could be, you know, that could probably exa- that could exacerbate your symptoms. I would think so. <laughs> I know I you're love pepperoncinis. High- What's really, that? I really love pepperoncinis. I, I eat them I like de- they're nothing. I dig them. They're nothing. No, yeah, they just got a good little flavor. Not even. I know you're a high Scoville uh, edge lord, so <laughs> I, I I know you probably put those in your breakfast cereal. No, I have ghost pepper stuff. I I have I have um my buddy oh. Jonathan. What's up, man? Uh, had a uh, had got me this pepper grinder. It looks like a pepper grinder, but instead of having peppercorns in there, it has dried um, smoked ghost peppers, <laughs> and you just grind it in it like it's a pepper shaker. It's the wow. best thing ever. I just like shake it, shake ghost pepper on everything. You know, my butthole hasn't been the same, but <laughs> I was say my, <laughs> I, my my pucker factor went up just list, just hearing that. So. So here it is. According to a scientific review published by Ethan Russo, the British Journal of Pharmacology, cannabis and pepper have very similar character uh, chemical traits. Pepper has a psychocannabinoid tryptonoid effect, which is known to help with pain and depression, uh, addiction and anxiety. Combining hmm. the tryptonoids such as beta I don't know how to pronounce any of these things. In pepper, with the tetrahydrocannabinol, I know how to say that, in cannabis has a synergistic chemical reaction on the cannabinoid receptors in the brain. In layman's terms, they put, they both bind to the same receptors of the brain and when combined have a therapeutic calming effect. So there you go. If you're one of these people who have like crippling paranoia when you smoke weed like I do, try this. Be my guinea pig. <laughs> Tell me how it works before I go and drop money on an eighth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fill fill me results and send it to <laughs> Lilberts dot com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'm gonna give it a try, but uh, again, I also want to kind of save a little bit of money because I want to put money on the on the uh, the McGregor fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because the odds are well, like six hundred, uh, like six hundred or negative six hundred for uh, Mayweather. I'm I'm really bad with their names. So it's, yeah, yeah, Floyd Mayweather, the boxer. So, so it means if you want to make six hundred, or if you want to make one hundred dollars, you have to bet six hundred dollars. Six. Mm-hmm. And Conor McGregor is plus four hundred. So if you bet a hundred bucks and you win, and he wins, you get four hundred. So I'm just like, maybe I should throw like sixty or eighty bucks on it. Just fucking whatever, you know. <laughs> if I lose, whatever. <laughs> And that's one of the uh, benefits of living in Vegas, right? Yeah. You can actually bet on those things. Yeah, just really long shots and be like, oh, I'll just put 20 bucks on this. If it loses, whatever, it's 20 bucks. If I win, because mm, is it going to Sherry's am Ranch? I, <laughs> am I, it, it, <laughs> just, just drive straight over there, man. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't stop. Don't, don't even stop. Don't we- <laughs> is it if correct me if I'm wrong, is it illegal to bet on boxing outside of Nevada? Uh, I think it's illegal to, to do any kind of gambling outside of the gaming commission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another nice monopoly. But um I think that that's pretty much <laughs> so, universal everywhere though. I'm, you're right. not even really allowed to bet with your buddies for twenty bucks or a beer or anything like that. I think they even they don't want you doing that, but I think they just look the other way because it's like if if someone wins buy you a beer, who gives a shit? <laughs> Enjoy your beer. It's don't a s- gift. Yeah. <laughs> Wink. Um. Who? So who do you? Who do you? Who do you think will win? 
Um, I'm not really too familiar with boxing, but I think maybe he has a chance. So I'm going to give it a shot. And the, the odds are pretty good. To, might as well just throw down 60 bucks on it. You know, if I put down yeah. 60 bucks, that's 240 that's bucks. That's payoff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm down. <laughs> I, I'm, I'd root for Ma- I'd root for McGregor, man. I don't I don't follow boxing or MMA too closely, but you know those are two of the the big names, so you can't really get away from hearing about them. Yeah, I'd love for McGregor to win just because I. It's his first boxing you know. match. <laughs> uh, yeah, but just because he wore that suit, do you see the suit <laughs> oh, he had my, on? Yeah, I posted a picture of that. <laughs> Which, by the way, I, I was—I almost forgot. The pinch said, "Fuck you." Yeah, I almost oh. forgot. Like we have, we also have a new Lulbert's, uh uncensored group, which we're totally Ooh. not stealing from any other podcast. Totally, this is totally new. No, no, no. Totally. Nope. It's about as organic as that Green Valley beer. Yeah, so. we're totally not ripping anybody <laughs> off at all, at all. Um, so yeah, if you want to get in on it, just contact, I know you've got to be at least friends with one of the co-hosts. Just, just ask any of them to let you in. They'll let you in. Um, yeah, but I posted that in there and I was like, I need to have the suit. Where is it? I know James, James Weeks showed me it to begin with. <laughs> it was like, I need this in my life. And anyways, it's amazing. Yeah. He, he said, he said like what his suit was, but like even the people I talked to who had seen the whole thing was like, that was the best thing I've ever seen. I was like, did you notice his suit? Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, his suit was okay. And I was like, no, no, like, did you really like look at it? And they were like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, the pinstripes of his suit are not pinstripes. They're just the letters. Fuck you. <laughs> like, going up and down the jacket. They're like, really? And I was like, yeah. And I pulled it up. They're like, that's, the, I, that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I, was like, I want that. Just when you think trolling, you know, can't go to the next level, <laughs> it, somebody will always surprise you, man. I want one that so. says "Nice spooks, nerd." <laughs> nice. <laughs> if I get that, I'll be even even happier. A little little ghosts in between. Yeah, yeah a little, ghosts a little, in between yeah, a little the Mario letters. ghost. <laughs> make it happen. You make it happen. Someone make it that's, happen. That's what you need to do with your winnings. Yeah. So. <laughs> forget buy textiles. Forget the brothel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, anyways, oh, so yeah, but we should probably plug this. Um, speaking of, of plugs, um, iTunes review. If if you want to win one of those, uh, the Bobby Hill, what the fuck, Anarcho Gadsden flag. I think that's technically what they're called. The Anarcho Gadsden flag. It's a little snaky, don't steppy, you know, <laughs> flags. Don't nope. throw it on me. No. Yeah, no steppy. But it has Bobby Hill's face for the snake. <laughs> it says, that's my purse. I don't know you. We're giving one of those away. And I have, you know, a copy of Ben Stone's book. And there's some, like, other stuff in there, like, which I'm not going to, men- like, mention everything. Uh, but, you know, like, stickers. And I have some, uh, like a bit strong and whatever. But I just threw something else in there. I'm not going to mention what it is. Ooh. But it's really, really awesome. So I uh, just like, oh, yeah, I could, I could throw one of these in there. Yeah, I really like that. So... I'm not uh, maybe I have to. What it is. Maybe I have to rescind my uh, hosting duty so I yeah. can get in on this contest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it keeps getting better and better. Yeah. <laughs> and then once once we once we review it and send everything out, and once I know it's been delivered, then I'll I'll tell everybody what was in it. But yeah, a lot of really cool stuff in there. So go on iTunes, re- rate us, review us. It could be one star, or whatever. It just has to be funny. And if Steve Miller Miller thinks it's the funniest, I'm not going to tell him who's writing the reviews. By the way, so don't try to get in on it. Uh, that's a high, yeah. yeah, otherwise you'll be disqualified. That's a high bar there. All right. Yeah, if you make him laugh the, the hardest, or <laughs> even if he, or if he just says that it's the funniest, uh, you'll win. You'll win everything. Everything. No second places. Uh, don't don't you think you're being a little humorous, Jim? You know, aren't you like discriminating against people who may not have as a developed of a sense of humor as others? Well, they could rip somebody else's <laughs> joke off. Oh, okay, so plagiarism is okay. Plagiarism is fine. They're not doing. They're not doing it for profit. I'm all right with with joke themes. There you with, go. With joke hackery, <laughs> <laughs> or get get your your funny friend to be like, "Hey, I listened to this 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 libertarian podcast. What you say? Oh yeah, just say something about roads. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, get one of your funny friends. Don't tell them why. Just do it. <laughs> And then once once you win, you could be like, oh, here you can have this bip strong. There was like three of them in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> give, him, I think, give him a booby prize, even though he did all the work. <laughs> I think there should be like a, a minus five for helicopter jokes. So. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> no. You'll be on, you'll be down you'll be downgraded. <laughs> yeah. Like really, it's on par with with communist gulag jokes. 
like I don't know if you ever like listen to communists talk. They usually like to joke about like, oh, this is what we invent gulags for. <laughs> off to the gulag with you, chum. Oh, off the helicopter with you, buddy. Ha ha ha. This is totally not a stale meme. Uh, does the Hans Hermann Hoppe <laughs> thing even still exist? It still has a special place in my heart, but like when people use it kind of un- unironically as a joke, at the same time, it's just right. like, come on, man. <sighs> come on, man. Get up. Get on my level. Yeah. But calling your buddies fellow helicopter pilots, that can be kind of clever. But come on. <laughs> be original here. Be original here. Anyways, uh, so, yeah. I'm just, wait- I'm just waiting for someone to freak out on the floor of uh, <laughs> Freedom Fest with that. <laughs> I'm going to be a happy I'll boy. I'll have to... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll have to try to make it up there one of these times. Yeah. I know it's... Uh, you should do it. Just come a... out for, at least for the weekend or something like that. Or at least one day, you know? Yeah, no S- doubt. Stay at Motel 6. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm like you. I don't I don't think I'm making Liberty or uh, Freedom Fest or... Pff, how, Jack all, Fest. All these festivals. Yeah, Jack Fest. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to make the Jack Fest this I'm year I'm not making again. it either. Yeah. Once I heard you and Babby were out, I'm like, eh. Yeah, Baron was also out. There was a, Not that there won't there was, be a lot of cool people there, but I was like, yeah, one of one of the other people. Money so, wise, I don't know. A few of the, you know, the other people that I was hanging out with there, a lot of them were talking about like, yeah, we can't, probably can't make it out this year. And I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> oh nah, well. Oh well. Because I'm not afraid to rough it, man. I know I'm it's a little. To rough it. I know it's a little Spartan out there, but yeah, you know. You or, you know you could be tied to a tree <laughs> or hog tied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, never, what what would happen in anarcho capitalist society when someone freaks out from too much drugs? They'll call the cops. No worries. <laughs> it's the same as anywhere else. <laughs> they call the fire department. They'll tie the hog time and call the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, what happened? I didn't catch that. We left early, but um, yeah, like I, I, ah, well, well, yeah. Which I like if about. They've got a- if they've got a monopoly on that service and, mm-hmm. you know, you've expended every other avenue, I, you know, I don't know how much you can fault people for as a last resort going to that, you know. Well, at the same time, it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's not like there's a big city right. nearby. Like the, the nearest town is it's it's small. But I think in that area, it's going to be like a volunteer firefighter anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. Which is, Am I vocal frying? This is turning into the ANCAP barbershop, isn't it? I knew it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I, I Nothing wrong with ANCAP that, shop. but yeah. I don't want to vocal fry. I'm all, I'm all right on the vocal fry. Well, but, uh, <laughs> I, think only, I think only Steve Miller Squared can uh, really yeah. pull that off. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine having him on, <laughs> on the ANCAP barbershop, <laughs> two people vocal frying? <laughs> That, be, that's like a YouTube get on that, love to Scotty. See, like the, get uh, on that. Uh, get, make uh, that uh, happen now. I need uh, the vocal fry special. Do it. <laughs> I need to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be so, the next. Uh, to be the next dank meme stash. Vocal fry. Me, vocal fry YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really do hope McGregor wins. Uh, I got, I'm going to have 60 bucks on it at least. Oh, please, please. <laughs> and especially because there's a couple people at work that are like, no, no, he's, he's going to lose. He's going to lose so bad. It's like I don't even care if he loses. I think Ben Shapiro was talking about how uh, he just he hopes that he loses, but he loses by like doing a roundhouse kick. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, gets disqualified exactly. and knocks him out. <laughs> so they have to like go over to his his, his knocked out body and raise his knocked out hand. <laughs> he, he just yeah. Uh, he yeah, he just gets to the point where he's like, screw this. Whap. Yeah. You know. That well that's the whole thing is I think that's gonna be the toughest thing for him is because he's trained yeah. so long and so hard with um using every weapon you have available to you, feet, head hands you know to not be able to use to implement those tools i think that's going to be the the struggle for him you know to only be limited to your fists uh, you know but i don't know how long he's been training you know he's just, obviously he's a you know capable guy but floyd has been doing this like this is his bread and butter this is how he trains you know so i think he's got the edge but you know 
McGregor's got a lot of heart, man. So. Yeah, and and he's and also he, retired. And he's, though. and he's dangerous. But oh, did, yeah, oh, Mayweather, did he? yeah, no, Mayweather retired. Right. Yeah, right. But so this is his first like professional boxing match, and like I had to look all this stuff up because I didn't know. But it turns out this is his first boxing match and um, or professional, but he's been training in boxing his whole entire since he was like twelve years old. Uh, right. McGregor is, so he has boxing training. But he's oh, never yeah, been I mean, a professional boxer. Sure he studied. He's studied all the. All yeah, the, uh, for most of his forms, post pubescent life, he's been doing this. So, can it be kind of interesting to see what happens? The the so, the, 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 sounds, the betting odds are against him, but I want to see how it turns out. It, it's just sounding like to me like this is a, a real life version of the, what what Rocky movie was that? <laughs> I think it was the first one, wasn't it? <laughs> but Rock, where Rocky came out of retirement, or you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All the other ones that came after it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, which time, right? Yeah. Or what was that movie where uh, Damon Wayans was like the boxer and he was all, you know, he had like some fat gut, prosthetic. And <laughs> <laughs> was it Adam's? I, I don't even know, man. It just sounds like a really retread movie script to me, but. Yeah. <laughs> but it has humor in this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it'll be actually, yeah, it'll be actually yeah. worth watching this time. <laughs> They're going to make a film version of this. I guarantee they're going to make a film version of this, especially if McGregor wins. <laughs> It'll be like a one of those kind of drama comedies. Drama comedies. Well, I mean, if he, if he wins, you just chalk it up to white privilege. You oh, know? yeah, of course. Uh, People are complaining that that whole little confrontation press conference thing was racist. I, I shit you not. He was like, it seemed racist to me. Like, come on, <laughs> <I'm> like really? <laughs> like, how was well, that racist? Doesn't everything? I... Yeah, I think they I, even I, took some... the f- same plane <laughs> to that event. Like, they were both right. on that same plane. It's these are all staged. It's just it's, it's entertainment. That's why people watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's exhibitionism. Yeah. I don't know. I think I heard Joe Rogan say that. Uh, uh, McGregor is going to win, so that's kind of an interesting perspective. Well, I'll put money yeah, on that Yeah, I mean, you got to res- you you got to respect uh, Rogan's yeah, you know, experience that's in that life. in that point, right? When he's so not that's, talking that's about interesting man. When he's not talking to Maynard <laughs> about wine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't uh, listen to that one yet, but oh, okay. that's interesting, man. Because uh, Maynard Maynard's from AZ, yeah, he, or not from, but he's you know, he lives in AZ. He, he res- resides here in uh and you his know, winery has his winery here so yeah. i didn't know he had a winery in but i uh well i kind of did because i i saw uh what was his name gary vaynerchuk had uh when he when i still watch his wine channel like he actually had him on his wine show maynard and it was kind of mm-hmm. like why the fuck is maynard on <laughs> <laughs> on wine library <laughs> what is happening here Oh it's shit! You have a winery. Pucifer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Pucifer is releasing their brand new line of wines. <laughs> We're trying to compete with Kiss. What was? It? What was? That? No. <laughs> who? Who was? What was that rock band that ended up having their own wine? Was it oh. ACDC? It was one of these classic rock bands, ACDC or something like that. I can't imagine uh, it being too great. Was it Poison? <laughs> Cause that would actually kind of be cool. Or Mo- <laughs> hey, drink some poison. Was it Motley, Motley Crue? I don't know. Oh, who was it? I remember there was. I was like, oh, I'll try it, and I was like, oh no. I looked at the price. I was like, no, I won't. <laughs> and roll. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there's a lot of bands that at least put their name on. Yeah. Uh, a bottle of wine. Kiss Grateful will put their Dead. Name on everything. Rolling Stones. The Police. Kiss will so. put their name on everything. If there is something yeah. that to be sold in this world, there's a Kiss version. I guarantee you, if I Google it right now, there will be a Kiss wine. I <laughs> yeah, guarantee it's the kiss you. of death. The kiss of death is what it is. Kiss um, band. Well, yeah. Yep, there it is. There it is. They also have beer. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, and you know, have we? We should probably talk about Gene Simmons trying to uh, copyright the horn hands, or I, I always call it Slayer, but you know, throwing but metal Dio, or horn man, hands. Dio did that. Yeah, that was Dio. Exactly. 
Exactly. And it's and it's also uh, with the thumb out is in sign, the sign language is I love you. Yeah. So what are you, you're going to copyright, uh, you know, the sign language. And not only that, but Dio, <laughs> Dio said that, because I think he's Italian or something like that. And I remember he said that his mother used to do that to him. It was like a sign of affection, that whole thing. And he, he started doing it. He's like, oh, it looks like a devil horns. And so he started doing that at, at, at shows and people, and it just took off. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it even predates Dio. Like, it's... Shut yeah. up, Gene Simmons. I, <laughs> Just stick your sure tongue people... out and play your bass and shut up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> shut up and entertain me. Yeah. Well, Marginally. entertain other people. I'm not a big Yeah, guy, not even yeah. me. Yeah. I can get down with some old Kiss, you know, Detroit Rock City or, you know, something like that. But, yeah. Can One I or two songs is about it. Or was that uh, Bill and Ted? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna assume that was Bill and Ted. I know they wrote it. Whatever. Might as well have been. <laughs> Might as well have it, been it, Bill and Ted. It, it was indeed Wild Stallions. Yeah. <laughs> it was Wild um, <laughs> uh, Correction: Keanu gave rock and roll to you. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a band, by the way. Yeah, I've never heard that. But I keep uh, meaning to get around to listening to it, and that's been about. 15 years ago when I first started hearing it all, we had a band. I was it like it do Dog Never. Star? Or yeah, what, something like that. I know there was something like a dog in there, which is fitting because I just watched John Wick the other night for the first time. The first one. Great movie. Great movie. Yeah. I have nothing but respect for... I know, Matrix aside, <laughs> your feelings on it. I, I, I totally respect Keanu. No, no, for, I do. Uh, I do. Don't get me wrong. Does, so. Yeah. Except Constantine. But uh, <laughs> what? I liked it. <laughs> Anyways, it, uh, <laughs> it was It was okay. It was okay. Yeah, but. See, like people think that I like loathe the Matrix, and I, I I do it to kind of play it up. It's not a horrible movie. Right. It's really not. It just does not hold up, and it's not as innovative as people think. And for the most part, it's kind of boring. <laughs> it's really kind of boring. You know? Yeah, I I haven't watched it for years so if i went back and viewed it you know through these old eyes I'm, i may uh, i may, <laughs> I may agree up. more with you yeah. but. and i did like the second one more than i like the first one and it, it's not because it's any better of a story it's not i get it it's not good i understand it but <laughs> the action scenes were way funner way way funner yeah. that's well, why there's I some truth it. to that yeah yeah but looking but back yeah. on that scene where he's like fighting a billion Agent Smiths, oh man, is that so <laughs> dated? It looks so cool when I first saw it. Then I look back on it now and I'm like, oh my God, this looks like Toy Story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this does. This, yeah. this is like the Star Wars prequels. No. <laughs> oh, oh shot. that is shots fired. Shut, I'm we... getting an angry letter from Brian now. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. I am cannons fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you no, know that Patreon yeah. episode we were gonna do. We're gonna have to cancel that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. Sorry. Damn it, wah, Luke. Wah. <laughs> Damn it, Luke Hart, you ruined it again. That's, that's what I. Yeah, everyone's got a thing. That's yeah, what I do. Yeah, yeah. John Wick, good. Go see it. <laughs> I, I, I have or it. Rent it. Both of them on my computer, and I'm like, I need to watch this. Everybody's telling me to watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it's, it tomorrow. It's, I'll watch it tomorrow. Good night. It's just a the next day. I watch it tomorrow. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> Castlevania. Oh, I gotta watch that right now. Uh, <laughs> I gotta watch that right now. Oh, Castlevania man. was great, man. I I give it a, a two whips up. <laughs> it would uh, if there was one thing that I could change. I, I know Matt is like mad at it because the church didn't have a, an agenda or have a motive. And I'm like, fuck you. It's a church. It doesn't have to. Uh, <laughs> but like we, we know what the motive is of the church. It's just inherent in the church. It's, yeah. Yeah. Power. And the, the one thing that I could have that really could have set it over the top is if he would whip the wall and like a brick would fall out or something. And there was like a ham there. <laughs> if they would have done that, it would have been like perfect. Perfect yeah, in every way. Egg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh! Don't I'll take this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, when he starts eating the ham that he finds in the wall, <laughs> that would be great. 
A little vial of, you know, red liquid or whatever, right? Yeah. Or if there was, like, some sort of door that he had open and he was just, like, he just pr- pressed some things on the wall. But if you look really carefully, he's pressing up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, <laughs> B, A, start. Circle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little no, yeah, things you know, like that, yeah. <laughs> that I mean, made it so much better. <laughs> I, I, think that, I, I think the church had its motivation. Its motivation was the consolidation of knowledge and power. And, yep. you know, once somebody started to threaten that regardless of the source then you know they had to be you know put down so yep. and yeah it's, and I mean, also it's... religion right they have a religious thing against witches and witchcraft of course but you know it was, it was really good i like that <laughs> spooks yeah, yeah and they're gonna get another season which is great which is more than what i could say for thundercats which is kind of like which I consider to be kind of like an equivalent, like no one watched that thing. And I, I'm so upset that no one watched it. And I recommend I it. Like, yeah. I, I grew up watching Thundercats and I, I loved it. Even as like going back now, it's unwatchable, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so like when that drama, like drama class level acting in that thing. And I was like, right. I used to love this. <sighs> uh, snarf. This is my favorite um, show. Oh man, Snarf is annoying now. I used to love that show. It was of everything about that show. Like I'd be like, I don't care what other stuff is on right now. You can watch Rainbow Bright later. I watched Thundercats. It's like that was my religion when I was yeah. preschool. But now I'm looking back on it like, wow. But I, um, I was bummed that I missed it, missed the new season, and because I don't have cable, and uh, I'm bummed that it was just a one and done. So. so my buddy Matt, who was also on the show, let me told me about something, and I keep meaning to look into it. I think it's called Torrance or something. I think Torrance is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. This is not the first time that I've heard of this. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can recommend it because I don't do it myself, but I hear right. great things about it. Great, great things about it. But no, you should definitely check out Thundercats. The two thousand, I think it was two thousand eleven. But the story is it, there's a resolution to the story in in the first season. It's a, but it, oh, okay. the problem is it's it's supposed to be it was supposed to be a two season thing. Like they were going to do the first season that told half the story, and then the next season they were going to like completely end the whole arc. So like there was kind of like two arcs, but there's a mm-hmm. big overarching arc over it as well. So you get the first season arc, and it's great. And then, like, you're supposed to go, like, okay, now they're going to go off and fight Mumra in the second season and actually, like, take him down. And they don't because the season was never renewed <laughs> for a second season. And if you really want to know why I have a loathing for My Little Pony, fuck the, <laughs> fuck the reg- forget the, the whole, like, generalized hate for My Little Pony, which is completely understandable. I get it. I'm kind of on board, too. But there's another level of hate for it because this was all coming around the time in 2011. This is all coming around the time where a lot of properties were buying up old 80s stuff. Like, Jim got a mm-hmm. movie. Um, right, which was terrible, horrible, god awful. <laughs> like you think, Jem the show was bad. Like this is on a whole other level. If you think it was, oh, if you liked the show, like I, I heard people that were like loving the show, like absolutely infuriated <laughs> with the movie. And I, so, I saw like reviews for it, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe they fucked it up that bad. So it's basically Star Wars Episode One of the Jem franchise. Pretty, no, okay. I think I think maybe this would might have been worse. <laughs> Because Ooh. because there was at least people, unfortunately, there were people who still liked the first, <laughs> the, the prequels. So it's a, <laughs> but there was no one It's the those. Star Wars holiday special of the gym. I think they, they, it was out for two weeks and then they they, all, uh, they pulled it out of the theaters. Like the theaters didn't drop it. Yeah. The studio pulled it out of theaters because they were like, this wow. is a train wreck. We don't want to be responsible for it. And they didn't talk about it ever since. They just kind of <laughs> slowly reduced it on Blu-ray and just pretended like it never happened. It was bad (laughs) did no one watch it before they (laughs) like everybody was upset with it everybody was upset with it but anyways this was like yeah this was about the time that they like all these companies were buying up 80s properties so they bought my little pony uh thundercats gem and they were also showing the old gem cartoons on what was it the hub or something like that Um, yeah they also bought um, the Aquabats. Now, Aquabats is like a totally 90s thing, like a late 90s thing. Oh, yeah. But their music style is Devo. Like, that's what they play now. Well, they used to play Ska in the 90s, but now they were they kinda, Ska. Yeah. I, oh, I used, 
I, I'm an Aqua Cadet. I was like one of the first thousand Aqua Cadets. Nine eight one Repo Bat. What's up? Uh, <laughs> I, I I have a really good Aqua Bat story that we should get to when you can. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll wrap this up real quick. Um, so, anyways, they were buying up all these properties, and what do you think the one of, of Thundercats, My Little Pony, Gem, all these '80s properties that have been coming up? What do you think the one that was super popular with, you know, my target demographic, you know, maybe at the time, which was like twenty, you know, eighteen to thirty year old men? It was fucking My Little Pony. But they were trying to get Th Thundercats to be the one for that demographic, but everybody wanted the eight year old cartoon. And so they were like, well, this is popular. And Tuna, Suna, I think Cartoon Network was doing it. And they were just kind of like, well, no one's watching this. Everyone's watching My Little Pony. I guess it's not really an 80s vibe again. So we're just going to cancel all these shows. And so now they, don't to, now they don't get to do the other half of the story. But anyways, uh, like it, the, the Castlevania show had that same kind of Thundercats. It was kind of like Americanized anime kind of vibe to right. it. And, and I love that style because it wasn't anime, but at the same time, it was like, it was good animation. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't trying to be nailed down to a particular style like an anime is. And it, kind of, it still had that same vibe and everything like that. And it came to a resolution. And now that I know they're going to be picked up for another season, I was just like, wow, this is, this is what I wanted from Thundercats. But it's Castlevania. You know, a game that yeah. really didn't have much of a plot to begin with. <laughs> But okay, yeah, yeah. Break into the castle, kill the vampire. Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> um, Not complaining. No, I, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Even I will say this: I have kids who watch My Little Pony, so I absorbed it. Just you know, I get the appeal, by, os though. by osmosis, and it, it's not a bad show. I mean, it does have like some pretty good story. I am not a brony, by the way. Full <laughs> disclaimer: I don't, I don't watch the show. I don't miss it. But while my kids were enjoying it. I actually found it somewhat tolerable or, you know, I could see mm -hmm. the appeal in it. That being said, the fact that it uh, ruined Thundercats is uh, completely unforgivable. Nope. So, <sighs> and they're I thought they were supposed to be making a Thundercats movie eventually. Yeah, uh, it was maybe. slated but, for 2017. It's not happening. And no, now we got the Little Pony movie coming out. Oh, see? God. I'm going to go see that. I'm going to... I think I, I think I've, I've convinced my yeah. I'm, I thought I was gonna go see it drunk, but now that I'm talking to myself about it, it's like maybe I should go like, you know, not that I do psychedelic drugs, never ever. It, it, one could be persuaded to trying mushrooms while in this theater <laughs> while this movie is playing. One could make that argument, and one could be persuaded by said argument. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but and I was like, yeah. Man, this could be interesting because I because I have watched My Little Pony before, like shrooming, just to because I don't think I've talked about it with MK, like how I get the art styles in my brain when I watch shows, mm -hmm. and, I, and it has an interesting art style. To be fair, but I remember watching it like this is this is not good. <laughs> but the art yep. style is kind of interesting, and it was really kind of interesting to see the close up visuals that came of it. But um, hey, but there was yeah. a. Not that Doing I did psychedelic it. drugs in a theater full of kids. What could go wrong? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I guarantee you if that movie comes out, most of the people in there are going to be my age. Probably. Pro yeah, taking And their twice kids. my <laughs> weight. <laughs> <laughs> and probably wearing a, cost a furry costume. Or yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And when, when I walk down the aisles, it's going to stick to the floor, and it's not going to be because of soda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe get a row to yourself there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, where was I going with this? So, oh, no, I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> Castlevania, Thundercats. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So they're not gonna yeah. make a movie, unfortunately. Womp, womp. Ah well. Netflix, get on yeah, it. Yeah, Netflix, pick it up. Pick up the second that season. It's written. It's written. The script exists, <laughs> or at least the pro. Yeah. But anyways. So unfortunately, we didn't get the second season where it was going to wrap up everything. But yeah, what were you going to say about something? Uh, as I was going to say the Aquabats. Um, oh, the Aquabats. Yeah, I you know I grew up when they were a ska band, and before they were like on uh, I don't know what's that show on Nickelodeon or something. Anyway, Yo my, Gabba Gabba. A, <laughs> Yo Gabba Gabba. Yeah, um, that show is awesome. Have you seen it? 
I've watched a couple That's episodes. That's a kid show that I could watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. One of one of the uh, bands that I really love, Rocket from the Crypt. Uh, they were on it once, I think. Guaranteed, the song any or... band that you liked has been on that. <laughs> nice. There's got to be at least one band that everybody that somebody likes. No matter no matter who you are, your one of your favorite bands has been on that show. Cannabis Corpse. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, eat your breakfast. <laughs> Weed. Um, yeah. No, I had my my. Well, the death the clock. Do it. No, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the Alcabats were like a kind of a squeaky clean kind of. Yeah, I, I think a lot of them were LDS, or some of them were LDS. They, if I'm when, not mistaken. When, when they first started, they were all LDS. When they first started, yeah. right? So back in that back in that time period, I had my friends had a a band that opened for them. And their band. What band? <laughs> their band's name was Turbo Fuck 2000. <laughs> so I haven't heard they of them. Go, no, no, no. I mean, it was like a local thing. So, but the name Turbo Fuck 2000, they go to open for the Aquabats and they go up on stage and they look out in the, to the crowd and there's a bunch of kids and they're like, oh, uh, yeah, we're Turbo Fuck 2000. <laughs> 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 and then. <laughs> So imagine, like, you know, the Yo Gabba Gabba kind of crowd, and then, you know, <laughs> you're announcing the name of, of your band as Turbo Fox. So, yeah, like, yeah. When, every time that I've seen them, it's always been adult. Like, um, I think I've seen them open for Primus. That was an interesting show because it was Long Beach Dub All Stars, which I don't know who, if you're familiar with them. Long Beach Dub All Stars was kind of made up from the yeah, leftovers Sublime. of Sublime. Yeah, they made right. it into a dub, dub band, and it was great. It was actually better than Sublime. I like dub. Yeah, I love well, dub. A lot of Good things stuff. are better than Sublime, but that was really <laughs> that's kind of a low bar. But it was basically making Sublime good. Long Beach Ball Star is really good. Um, so it was they opened, and then it was the Aquabats, and then oh god, who else was there? I think there was one other band. I know uh, Blink One Eighty Two unfortunately was there, but then it was Primus, and Primus. If you haven't seen them, go see them. Nice. Primus sucks. You have to go see Primus live. They're the best. It's one of the best things you'll ever see. I suck. Yeah, I, dude, I grew up loving Frizzle Fry and Caesar Cheese, and um, yeah. but I've never seen them live, man. So they're, they're one I'd like to scratch off the list. Definitely go see them. And then who else did I see them? Where, oh, there was one other time. I know that I saw them twice. I'm trying to remember the second time. Who, who opened for them? Mm. I saw Cherry Pop and Daddies and the Aquabats open for them, too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, 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 I take that back. Suit, right? Cherry Pop and Daddies, this is how I found out about them, was they, I was going to go see the Aquabats, and they opened for, for uh, Real Big Fish. It was, <laughs> oh, yeah, this was the lineup. It was Cherry Pop and Daddies, and then the Aquabats, and then Blink-182, and then Real Big Fish. Can you imagine a time? Wow. Can you imagine a time where Blink-182 was second tier to Real Big Fish? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it happen. <laughs> there, there, there was probably like a three-month window where that was you know, yeah, a reality. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was right before Dude Ranch dropped. But they, they were playing songs from Dude Ranch. It was, and I remember my my friend was really into him, and I was like, "This is not, this is not that cool, dude. <laughs> this is just pop punk." Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Green Day Part Two. Oh God. No. Well, no, I take that back. Dookie was a good album. Fuck you if yeah. you disagree. <laughs> I, oh, I, I throw it in, album. and it is it is good. Insomnia was pretty good too. It's after that that it gets kind of downhill, really downhill, mm -hmm. really downhill. But, um, Whoa. Yeah. But Dookie was a great album. Kerplunk was an okay album. Uh, yeah. I think Dookie was my favorite. But anyways, um, the Aquabats, there's something else, man. And when, when, you go, when, when I saw them, when I first started seeing them, I'm getting feedback a little bit, by the way. Um, when I first saw the Aquabats, they used to like throw food in, in the audience. <laughs> it was like a bunch of adults. <laughs> there was no kids, so this was probably later, I guess. But uh, they used to throw food in the audience, and like you'd, you'd see the crowd. It was all like you know, twenty year olds or older, you know, some high school kids. They would be like, and they'd talk to them like they're kids. They'd be like, "Hey, kids, <laughs> how's it going? And remember, be polite. Say no, thank you to drugs. <laughs> like, let's say Here, have yeah. a snack." <laughs> Yeah, they'd be throwing like churros and like tortillas out. Uh, 
pick up a complimentary juice box on the oh, way Oh, no, out. it's the sand fleas, and then they would fight them on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they were great, man. They were yeah. great. Oh. True showman. They are, yeah. True showmanship right there. They're basically the Gwar of Ska. <laughs> <laughs> Squar, yeah. That's going to be the title, the Gwar of Ska. <laughs> the which, by the way, I'm still kicking myself because I should uh, probably wrap it up with this. Um, I had a chance to go see Gwar, and I asked if I can get a day off. And I had a total opportunity to be like, well, I'm calling in sick. They were like, you can call in sick. And I was like, I don't know. That seems like I'm going to risk my job on something. And I could have yeah. gone and seen him. And like, I was like, all right, I don't want to get fired, whatever. And then David Brokey died like a couple months later. And I was like, uh, oh, man, this is, it was the second time I missed them. They also played at the barn in Riverside, which I was I used to go to like three, four times a weekend. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm serious. Like, it would be like Friday, Saturday and like Sunday they would have a show and then Monday they would have a show and then it would be like clear the rest of the week. But and I used to go there like all the time. Mm-hmm. And I missed going to see Guar, and I was like, oh, oh fuck. Oh, I, I'll catch him next next time. And they never came back, and then Guar happened here, and I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to get fired from work. I'll stay. <sighs> rip, in, St- rip in peace. <laughs> rip in peace, man. Yeah, that's, I never saw him either, man. That sucks. Yeah, I guess I'll go see him post-Brocky. They're not there bad. The, the new singers aren't bad, but, you know, it's not... David Brocky, though. Yeah, because, I mean, that was his thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, he kind of... He was the last one. He was the last Last core member. Yeah. Original core member, yeah. Anyway, so you want to plug your podcast? We'll wrap things up. (laughs) Yeah, man. Uh, When I'm not being a little brute, which I love to do, you can find me at the ZGY, Zombies Government New Podcast, on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Android, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all that. And I will be getting a new episode out <laughs> ASAP. Yeah, do so, it. Do it. Do it. The last time we did was good, man. You were on it. It was fun, man. Yeah. You and Baron, you and Baron kicked ass. That was a while ass. ago, man. So, that was a while I, ago. Come it was, on, it was a get, month ago, You bro. need to get Drew back on there. Bring some six-packs. Who was that girl that was with you guys? Bring her back, too. All of it. Just bring yeah. it Bring it all. Do, do it old school. I know, man. I'm, I'm trying. Just and we'll get you back on there beer. down the line, too. Buy beer. Just buy beer and say, Drew, I have beer. <laughs> I, send a you know picture. where this is going. <laughs> Just make it happen. You know where this ends up. Yeah. On, on my RSS feed. Yep. <laughs> yep. And Scotty, bring Miller Miller on and have a vocal fry contest. You can even make this happen. I need to hear this. This needs to, this needs to be a thing. <laughs> it needs to be a stat. <laughs> All right, man. Great having you on, Worms. Hey, thank you, brother. Worms. <laughs>